What's going on gamers? Today we're going over how to install Bibliocraft onto your client and your Apex server. Before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell in order to stay updated on all of our Minecraft videos. In vanilla Minecraft, collecting and storing items is a primary feature. As you collect more, you'll find that you're constantly using the same sort of chests and item frames that become unconventional in aesthetics and functionality. This can get very confusing and very unorganized if you're not careful. Introducing Bibliocraft. This mod aims to help get your things organized while also adding a bunch of fun aesthetic options to your game. Today we're going to go over a few of those very options. Before we jump right into the tutorial though, don't forget that you can find any of the links that you may need regarding this tutorial in the description of this video. Speaking of links in the description, you'll probably want to check out the Forge link that we have in the description so that you can install the Forge version that you need in order to run this mod. I'm personally using 1.12.2, so go ahead and try that. Once you've got that all settled up, you're going to type in your Google search bar, Bibliocraft and one of the first options that should appear is the CurseForge link. Go ahead and find that and select it, and once you do, a new page will appear, and you're going to scroll down next to Description where you see Files and select that. From here, you're going to scroll to Recent Files, and on the right-hand side of that, you'll see something that says View All. Hit that. Now, you can select the All Versions drop-down tab to see which version specifically you want. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be using 1.12.2, so that's the one I'll select. And then at the latest download, I'm going to select the orange download button, and the download will begin. Once it's done downloading, we'll be able to move on to the next step. Now we're going to install it into our client. So type in your Windows search tab, percent app data percent, and hit enter. A folder will appear, and you're going to select dot Minecraft. Then you're going to find the mods folder inside of that folder. And then you're going to click and drag Bibliocraft into that mods folder. This is how you install it into your Forge profile. To install it onto your Apex server, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that your server is stopped, so hit the red stop button. Now, we want to make sure that we're running the right profile, so head down to jar file field, and in the drop down tab, search up forge, and then select whatever version you're using. Once again, I'm using 1.12.2, so that's the one that I'll be choosing. Now select change version in the pop-up, then create new world in the pop-up, and finally, Normally you'd say restart now, but let's hit restart later and you'll see why. So when your server is stopped, you're going to head to the left hand side and select FTP file access. From here, you're going to enter your control panel password, or if you have one cached, you can just enter that in. Next, you're going to hit the mods folder that appears in the next page. Then you're going to hit upload on the left hand side. And then you're going to click and drag the Bibliocraft file from your downloads folder into the add files section. Once the install is at 100%, you'll be able to go back to the main page of your panel by clicking the server's name at the top of the page, and you can either start or restart your server in order to get the changes saved completely, and then you'll be able to play on your Apex server. Now let's cover a little bit of the mod. As you can see, there's quite a bit to look at here, but honestly, it's only scratching the surface, so let's dig deep. First of all, you'll notice that there's a lot of shelves here. Well. These are basically shelves. They come in many different types of wood colors and they can hold different types of books. And the one that I'm pulling up right now is the potions. So let me just grab a couple of potions. But what you would do is you would build whatever shelf you want. In this case, I'm just searching up in creative the potion shelf and I'll just grab an oak one. And I'm gonna go ahead and place it on top of the other bookshelf as soon as I can jump up there. And once I finally do, then I'll just go ahead and place down the potions that I've grabbed and they just sit up there quite nicely. It's really awesome. But not only can it hold books, but different types of shelves can also hold your weapons or certain items. Those also come in multiple different colors, but as you can see, it's very aesthetically pleasing and it's kind of cool just to look at. Speaking of things that hold things, let's talk about the frame chests. This basically combines an item frame and your chest, makes it a lot simpler for organization purposes. It's very helpful and I'm sure you'll find a lot of uses for it. I know I would. Whew, all that organization got me tired. 
let me go sit down in these awesome chairs and sit next to my table. This is basically that, just chairs and tables. You can put things on top of it, such as this lamp that's next to me, as well as decorate the back of the chair with a different type of chair backing. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of them right to the left of me, and there are different colors and different variations. Also, you can extend tables just by putting them down next to each other as if it were like a glass pane. Then you can have your own little last supper. Speaking of supper, how do you know when it's supper time? Well, luckily for you, there's this awesome grandfather clock, and this is how it looks. Not only is it functional, but it just looks pretty awesome. Even if you put in a command for changing the time, it'll automatically switch to that time in-game. That's really, really awesome. Moving on from here, once you're finally done with all of your work for the day, or maybe you want to get started on some extras, you can head over to your new crafting bench, which is the fancy workbench. You can see it has some cool tools on the side, as well as books for a bookshelf in between. It works the same as any old crafting bench, but it just looks pretty awesome. Now, it's nighttime, and there's not a torch to be seen, so how am I lighting up the area? Well, that's with the lanterns. More than just the regular Minecraft lanterns, these are called fancy lanterns, and they come in multitudes of different colors, as well as the base will work in iron or gold. As you can see, there's a whole slew of different types of lanterns and lamps, and you can use them all. I'm going to go ahead and select one of the magenta ones from the iron category, and I'm going to go light up what I think is the coolest part of this mod. What part is that, might you ask? Well, of course, it's a sword pedestal. If you ever want to feel like Link pulling out the Master Sword, or maybe even King Arthur pulling out Excalibur, this is what you want. This is the coolest little thing that I've ever seen in one of these mods, and I love it. Not only that, but if you go into third person mode, you can actually make yourself pretty much as big as the sword. Now let's go over some common issues. The first one that we're going to look at is a version mismatch. It'll look something like this. Basically what this means is you have the wrong version of the file for the version of the game. For example, 1.12.2 will not run on 1.16.5. This is an easy fix. All you need to do is make sure that you have the right Forge version that you're running. I was running 1.16.5, so I'll just switch it over and it'll be all good. Another one that we run into is the server will get stuck loading. This is a simple fix. Just go into your server console and type in slash FML confirm. This will run a few things on our end, and once those things are done, the server should restart no problem. Then you'll be able to go back in the game. Overall, this is a pretty straightforward mod, but it offers quite a bit more than you realize. I mean, really, we only scratched the surface of what this really offers. There are so many other aesthetic options that are super cool to look at and super fun to explore, and really will enhance your game. For example, there's a bunch of typewriters that we didn't even look at. Anyway, that'll just about do it for this one, gamers. As always, I hope that you have lots of fun. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more great content like this, then subscribe or click these videos. Until next time, gamers.